a few years ago at the last church I was a minister at at St Philip's in York Street or St Philip's Church Hill as it's otherwise known. Uh, a couple came out from Oregon in America, in Portland in Oregon, and uh, they wanted to um, have a renewal of their vows uh, while they were on holidays. And, and they asked me if I'd do it. I said, ah, I, I don't see why not. And I just got to know them and realized they were wonderful Christian people, but they were really determined to, uh, keep, re they wanted to renew their vows to each other from their wedding day, not because they hadn't kept them along the way, but because they thought it's great for each other to hear again these promises. They'd been married for 50 years, and so they were determined to make it to the end. And so uh, we did it. I haven't done many uh, marriage renewals, but in our passage day, it's kind of like a marriage renewal, except that uh, the Israelites uh, hadn't circumcised their children. And so before they can take the land, we're working through the bush, book of Joshua, they've, they've come into the land, they've crossed miraculously through the River Jordan. It's dried up before them, much like the Red Sea. They've camped at Gilgal outside of Jericho. They've been promised they're going to take it. But there's something they need to do first and that is renew their commitment to the Lord uh, in one of the most painful ways possible. Not quite like a, a renewal of wedding service at St. Philip's York Street, uh, which is beautiful and wonderful and involves no pain at all. This one's very painful. Let's pray and get into God's word. Father, we wanna thank you for your word to us and we pray please we'll learn now as the Israelites recommitted themselves to you what that means, what that looks like, but also what it means for us as well as your people in Jesus' name. Amen. We're in Joshua chapter 5 and we pick it up at verse 1. When all the Amorite kings across the Jordan to the west and all the Canaanite kings near the sea heard how the Lord had dried up the water of Jordan before the Israelites until they had crossed over, they lost heart and their courage failed because of the Israelites. At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives and circumcise the Israelite men again. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the Israelite men at Gibeath Haraloth. This is the reason Joshua circumcised them. All the people who came out of Egypt who were males, all the men of war, had died in the wilderness along the way after they'd come out of Egypt. Though all the people who came out were circumcised, none of the people born in the wilderness along the way were circumcised after they'd come out of Egypt. For the Israelites wandered in the wilderness 40 years until all the nation's men of war who came out of Egypt had died off because they did not obey the Lord. So the Lord vowed never to let them see the land he had sworn to their fathers to give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. He raised up their sons in their place. It was these Joshua circumcised. They were still uncircumcised since they had not been circumcised along the way. After the entire nation had been circumcised, they stayed where they were in the camp until they recovered. The Lord then said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the disgrace of Egypt from you. Therefore, that place is still called Gilgal today. Well, it's uh, one of the most uncomfortable uh, minor surgeries you could have if you're a man uh, is this uh, circumcision opera. You remember back with Abraham, well, way back, the nation's founder and well, yeah, great, 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 great grandfather of these people here. God had called him and promised him this land. He promised them to uh, that he would be great, famous, and he would bring blessing to the world and a curse to those who curse him, a blessing to those, and all the world, families of the world would be blessed through him. And as part of the sign of the covenant that uh, Abraham was to make with God and God was making with Abraham was that Abraham would be circumcised. Um, and so you chop the foreskin off your penis and uh, that's the way uh, that the Israelites were to be marked out. And along the way, uh, uh, that is what they had done. And so all the Israelite parents would circumcise their male children. Uh, that is until they wandered in the desert for 40 years. Now we're not told why it is that they didn't 
circumcise their sons, whether it was they were disgruntled because God had condemned them to die in the wilderness and never see the land. And so they thought, well, blow that. We're not going to care for our children and honor God if that's the way it's going to be. And we, we saw how destructive that was. If you read through the book of Numbers, the awful things that happened that they did and how God would bring punishment that would lead them to some sort of repentance and forgiveness and God's mercy shined all the way through it. But still they did not circumcise their son, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Uh, and so this is the moment. These really do want to be known as God's people. These are the ones who they have been bold in obeying the promise God has said to Joshua and to the people, be strong and courageous, obey my book, go in and take the land, I'm giving it to you. There's still the same overwhelming odds that they had faced 40 years ago, nothing's changed there, but these ones are determined to live in trust, to live out the promises and the, the, the of God and to be his people. And so they're willing to undergo this painful day surgery which I think is set back the plans for uh, several days as they all recover it from it uh, we, we know it takes at least three days to recover because of the incident with Dinah and the Shechemites if you want to go back and do a bit of um, digging in Genesis chapter 34 uh, we're, we're told how long it takes to recover as a grown man having this operation until you're able to walk around again and so uh, they uh, they go through with it uh, Joshua makes the knives and circumcise all the Israelite men of war, which we know from the book of Numbers is about a million of them. This is a lot of people that are going to be circumcised uh, and they are doing it because they want to be known as God's people. They want to be in covenant with him. They, it, it, they weren't before uh, and so it's almost like that marriage renewal. Uh, what does that mean for us though? Well, I think there's always signs that uh, we're committed to the Lord and we want to keep recommitting ourselves to the Lord, not necessarily by religious works or by circumcision. In fact, uh, if you let yourself be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you in the New Testament. But there's all kinds of things that we can do to keep reminding ourselves that we're God's people. And some of the things we do in church, like communion, uh, there to help remind us of the gospel, of God's love and, and that he's with us. It's not the ritual that makes us right with God, but it's a good way of remembering and recommitting ourselves to God every time that we receive it, of trusting his promises and knowing that he's good and declaring that I am his and he is mine. But we can do that in all sorts of other ways as we talk with each other, encourage each other. Uh, we can, uh, you know, people put up Christian posters on their wall uh, to remind them of the great promises of God. Uh, we get stuck into the Bible day by day to remember him. Uh, and we have things like confirmation as well. It's interesting. We've got confirmation coming up in a few weeks. Our regional bishop, Peter Lynn's coming. It's going to be a really wonderful day, cracky day. Hope you're there for it. Uh, as our whole church family gathers to support those who get to stand up and declare their faith uh, in public. Some have never done that before. Uh, at least one of our uh, confirmation candidates, though, has been confirmed before, but uh, didn't understand what they were doing at the time and so uh, it was just something they did as a teenager that you know their parents impressed on them and said this is the right thing to do but had never been a Christian never lived out as a Christian but now has become one later and so has asked if they can do it again and it's almost like this I want to stand up and declare to the church that I am uh, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ many many years after her uh, original confirmation she's going to stand there and say these promises i really mean now i understand them i trust the lord jesus and i'm his and i want everyone to know it and so it's a wonderful thing to do uh, if you haven't been confirmed or want to be uh, or someone um, you know a christian brother or sister you, you want to encourage them to to come well speak to us uh, at church and um, we can organize for for that to be part of your uh, walk with the Lord uh, in the weeks coming uh, in August. So that's going to be a great event and be praying for those people as they prepare for that and as they uh, want to stand before everyone and declare their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope you're able to join us for that day. But every one of us needs to make that commitment over and over again. That's why we have 
confession of our sins and prayers of preparation and all kinds of things in church to remind us of our need for our Saviour, that we're not perfect yet, that God has paid the price and that we want to stand firm with his people, loving him and being lights to this great world. Uh, the Israelites, they sucked it up even though it was very painful. Uh, they went through it because they knew that was part of the way they were to covenant with God. And the, we saw that the Ammonite kings and the Canaanite kings are already afraid. Uh, um, and they should really be afraid now because these people are determined to be gods and to fulfill his promises to them. Uh, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for those in the past who stood and made their firm commitment to you public. And we pray for those who are about to do that again in our own midst of church uh, through confirmation. We pray, please, that we would keep renewing our commitment to you uh, each day, each week, as we come together, that we would stand there and remind ourselves of your great promises, of your great Son and Saviour, but also remember to keep repenting and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, to keep examining ourselves and asking ourselves the hard questions about how we're going with you, but to be determined and to put in place those things that are going to be necessary for us to keep going. Thank you for your continual reminder for each other and the tools you give us. Thank you for your word, which is your authority and gives us everything we need for life and for godliness. Help us to be in it, to remind ourselves to keep reading and growing as your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for another devotion tomorrow.